How's it going, everybody? Happy Halloween. Sorry for the late video, but there's still a few hours left of Halloween, so I figured it's appropriate to share the Squirrel on Halloween. It hasn't really been shared in any sort of accessible format other than the two live readings I've done of it since i written it back in 2016. It is written for a Slippery Rock English Department Halloween party. And my buddies who are in the poem were supposed to come up, hence their inclusion in the poem. But that never shook out. Kept them in the poem anyways. They are the Pepperoni Brothers who I mentioned. How we got that name back in the summer 2013. Regular practice of ours to rent shitty Redbox movies. One of those movies happened to be Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Use actual cast members from the TV show Jersey Shore. Group of characters in the movie affectionately referred to as the Pepperoni Brothers. We liked the name so much that we adopted it. Uh, there's also allusions to Alan Quartermain, so there's some literary uh, inspiration. So this is, this is a unique piece. Here it goes. The Squirrel on Halloween. The Pepperoni Brothers were looking for a way to get high. They'd been given the idea to trip sack on Halloween night. They were out of luck. All their dealers were dry. Then Joe exclaimed, I know someone we can try. We were told to roll over, but to give him five or ten, because he had to wait for his dude to re-up again. We drove down to Sheets and took out some cash. Took a little out for acid, some Addy, some hash, then headed over to our dude's pad. Quite the coincidence as he had just gotten back. My friends looked confused and then looked at me. Um, why didn't you tell us he lived in a fucking tree? I was out of answers and all I could do was shrug, point to the branches and yell, Let's buy drugs! Once we reached the peak, we reached his nest. And inside, Nutsy was dressed in a bulletproof vest. Sorry for the gear, but you don't understand, he began. When you give out Molly as candy, parents can get a little out of hand. I mowed down a couple couples, a single dad, a great aunt. More are coming to kill me, so I can't take a chance. Two corpses hung in the shower. Two were stacked on the couch. One was cut up in the bathtub. The last had a gun in his mouth. Needless to say, my friends and I were freaked. One of us suggested that we should just pick up later in the week. But I maintained. Tried to keep things cool. Put forth the idea of smoking a bowl. This was part of our plot. Our way to escape. It had to go smoothly or we'd meet a similar fate. We decided to lace the bowl. Try to get Nutsy a little loopy. We considered PCP, then we settled on some Tadooki. First, Dylan got greens. Then DJ was after. The weed was so good, coughs immediately turned into laughter. I was third in rotation. We couldn't get caught. So I said slyly, Nutsy, let me add a little to the top. I took that as my opportunity and freshened the pack, made it look nice and fat and let him hit that. It only took a few seconds for him to feel the effects. He lay sprawled on the floor. Our plan was a success. For good measure, we filled our bags with an assortment of powder and pills, jugs of ayahuasca and scattered dollar bills. We descended the tree, still a little out of breath, but excited nonetheless, for we had just escaped certain death. DJ proposed that we finish the job. We should burn down his house like petty, vengeful gods. So we did all that, and marveled at the flames. Nutsy perished in agony, cursing our names. It took a few seconds to register that we were really alive. We almost fucking died. It was such a crazy night. Dylan grabbed a handful of drugs and, with a widening grin, declared that, at the moment, the fun should begin. We stole candy from small children, chocolate chips and lollipops. Then we got home, got baked as hell, and watched a shitty red box. Thank you. Happy Halloween.